Hey everyone, I recently got the Miu Mini Plus. I really liked the device at first. Unfortunately, I found a lot of quirks that I didn't expect when I first bought it. So I'm just gonna talk about those quirks here today and why I actually bought the RG35XX instead. First off, I want to talk about the weird quirks with the display. So if you use this device at night or in a quiet setting, you might be surprised to hear some buzzing coming from this device. This is actually an unfixable hardware issue, and this is the case for all Miu devices including the Miu Mini and the Miu Mini Plus. If you search something along the lines of Miu Mini Plus buzzing or Miu Mini Plus PWM noise, you'll find more about this issue. You'll also find that the only way to get rid of the buzzing is to set your device to maximum brightness. Reading about this made me really sad because no YouTuber mentioned it, and it's also an issue that can never be solved over the lifetime of the device. Once you hear the sound, it's very hard to unhear and every time I have my device at low brightness I hear the sound. The next thing I want to talk about is the consistency of the backlight. Upon checking my device we can actually see that the backlight is much stronger in the bottom right side of the screen. When you're playing games this isn't really an issue. However during boot up, menu screens, and loading screens you will definitely notice this flaw especially if you're using the Mi Mini Plus in a dark setting. Moving on to the audio, the speaker on this device is actually quite decent and does get really loud. However, there's actually a baseline white noise that comes from the speaker. This noise is there no matter what volume you have your device at. The only way to get rid of this noise is to completely disable the speaker. And the only time this happens is when you plug in headphones. Because of how quiet this noise is, and the fact that it doesn't distort the audio, and it also disappears when you plug in headphones, means that this white noise isn't really an issue. I simply wanted to point this quirk out for those of you who don't already know about it. Now for the headphone jack. I actually realized that the sound coming from the headphone jack is much quieter than I expected. So if you're playing this device in a busy environment or on the go, you might not be able to hear your retro games too well. Let's move on to the thermals. I found that the Mi Mini Plus gets very hot. It didn't matter whether I was playing PS1, SNES, or Game Boy Advanced. More specifically, if you put your hand against the front glass or the back of the device, you will feel that the device gets extremely hot, and this will happen even with shorter sessions. Feeling the heat after putting down my Mi Mini Plus really left me worried about the longevity of this device. If you're worried about the thermals or any other thing I mentioned in this video so far, you might want to consider the Enbernic RG35XX. Let's go over how the RG35XX solves all of the quirks that the Mi Mini Plus has. First off, the issues with the display. The 35XX's perfectly backlit display will have no buzzing no matter what brightness you have it at. On top of that, the dynamic range on this display is significantly better than the Mi Mini Plus's display, with the screen getting much dimmer and much brighter than the Mi Mini Plus. Next, onto the audio. Unfortunately, this speaker also has a baseline white noise, but this could be remedied in the same way as the Mi Mini Plus. Regardless, this speaker more than makes up for it with its clarity. I truly enjoy the high-end definition that comes from this speaker, with all that definition carrying over to the headphone jack as well. Overall, the audio coming from this device is just much louder than the Mi Mini Plus. For the thermals, you're gonna notice that this device doesn't get nearly as hot as the Mi Mini Plus. The Enbernic gets warm at most, even when playing PS1 games. If you're planning on getting a transparent RG35XX, you might have noticed the large metal plate in the middle of the device. My theory here is that this really helps with the thermals and disperses the heat from the CPU and GPU. On the Mi U, you're not gonna find any of that. To wrap this all up, I want to talk about the software. Generally, the modding scene for the 35XX is much more active when compared to the Mi U Mini Plus. You might be surprised to hear that there's 6 different OS's for the RG35XX. Well, for the Mi U Mini Plus, you're going to find around 4 different OS's. I also found that there's more attention to detail when it comes to the software on the RG35XX. For example, this little headphone indicator in the stock OS, and this themed advanced emulation setting 
modding's menu in MinUI. So when you take a device with a more active modding scene, a device that runs cool while playing games, has loud defined audio coming from the headphone jack, a console that has a consistent and even backlight, and overall no buzzing no matter what brightness you're playing at, you're going to get an absolute beast of a device. And I know this might sound nitpicky, but I much prefer the fit and finish of the Embernic RG35XX when compared to the Mew Mini Plus. The plastic used on the Embernic device reminds me of an N64 controller, while the plastic on the Mew device feels closer to Joy-Cons or Nintendo DSi. This isn't really an issue, but considering the fact that the Mew device came with a really strong plastic smell, it gave the impression that the Embernic device is just overall much higher quality. On top of that, the RG35XX is not only 10 to 15 dollars cheaper, but it also has video output, dual SD card slots, and even a real-time clock if you're trying to check the time or play Pokemon. So when you take all those things into account and have better quality control, the Embernic just becomes an unbeatable device. Well that's it for this video. I hope you guys learned something. And last but not least, thanks for watching.